Welcome to Belief Busters Podcast, where we change the world one belief at a time. True transformation happens when we question if the beliefs we hold are of truth, or simply someone else's belief that we have internalized as our own. I'm your host, Rev. Cherie Taylor-Jones, and I'm glad you could join us on the journey. Today, we are being joined with Valerie Recor. She is an amazing light in the movement of really supporting women. She helps overwhelmed working women shift their habits, manage their to-do lists, and be more productive so that they can work smarter and carve out time from themselves and their families. She is about supporting women to shift their mindset from we've have to do it all and that invisible emotional load that moms tend to take on. Mm -hmm. Valerie asks women to ponder an important question. Where are the partners? And she wants women to look at the roles that we have been conditioned to perform and then ask, why are we doing this? Valerie, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. This is like such a timely topic, and I'm just really excited to have you on our show because, you know, we live in a time where we're constantly being bombarded by the message, we can have it all, we can have it all, (laughs) which really translates into, for women, we have to do it all, we have to do it all. (laughs) So where do you think, (laughs) right? (laughs) <laughs> Where do you think women get the belief that we do have to do it all? I think it comes from a variety of places. So I think society in general conditions us to to do all of this. I was reading a study recently that talked about how men and women are equally messy. So we we tend to be just as messy. But in childhood, women are conditioned to be less messy so we notice it more that our appearance both physically and in our space is it's important Mm -hmm. and that our people are going to judge us based on on them and so we tend to be very aware of the messiness so how many of you have shoved stuff in the closet because you have guests coming over and you want your house to look clean and organized and so instead it all just goes in your guest bedroom and you just close the door and hope that nobody opens it (laughs) because we're concerned that people are going to judge us based on the state of our house and and our appearance falls into that as well. So through that, we are then led to this belief that we need to, we are the better caregiver because our society gives, you know, it's more likely that women are going to have maternity leave when they have their kids. The husbands are, are not, are less likely to be given that time. They're less likely to take it because we just assume that, well, of course, mom should be home with the baby. Mm -hmm. And that's for those who even have the privilege of maternity leave. I know many women don't get that. So then the moms are home. So of course, they're going to get better at understanding baby's cries, changing diapers quicker, taking care of stuff around the house. The men aren't given the chance. And so over time, it becomes, instead of realizing, well, of course, dad just hasn't changed as many diapers, he's going to be slower. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know how to do it. I'm just going to do it myself. And so then that carries on as women go back to work, whether they're stay-at-home moms or they're working outside of the house. Women just tend to take on more because we're conditioned to believe that we're better at it, that things aren't going to happen. And I think it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy then. We don't give our partners the chance to try or to Mm -hmm. do it. We grumble at them if they do it wrong or they do it differently. And so they just give up. Mm -hmm. And then it just spirals out from there as kids get older and women are going to be the ones who stay up late cleaning the kitchen and taking care of school forms and doing all of these things without asking for help or even asking for support. Help is sort of a tricky word in there, Yes, but they're just going to take it all on because it feels easier for them to do it than to get their partners involved. And so then their partners don't even know what's happening because they don't see it. And so then it it just spirals from there. 
I also like what you said about women feel that they will be judged for the level of cleanliness of their house. Mm -hmm. And then there was that equation to our bodies also as that house, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, so it's like mm -hmm. the house that we have a habitat in and the house that our soul has a habitat in. Right, yeah. And I think that extends to our kids too. So, you know, if dad shows up at school and their kids are wearing mismatched clothes, people are like, oh, how cute. You yes. know, you, your kids got, you got your kids dressed or they got themselves dressed. If mom shows up and her kids are wearing mismatched stuff, it's mom's fault. And I have long been of the, if my kids got themselves dressed, I'm not even sure I care if they're wearing weather appropriate <laughs> clothing. I'm just happy they got themselves dressed. <laughs> Yes. And then I ask them, you know, hey, if you're wearing short sleeves, it's snowing out. You might want to think differently about that choice. Or I don't really care. You got yourself dressed. But I, we tend to judge women on that as well and, and give men a little bit more leeway. So what's the process for you? How did you actually get this awareness and awakening that, you know, the conditioning that you were under? I feel like I've always just kind of been aware of some of this kind of just listening to maybe my parents and my parents friends talk about it or the way they talked about their spouses mm -hmm. and me just kind of wondering if that was the way it should be or needed to be or like why and then noticing that within my friends and within my clients the way that they talk about their partners and they're grumbling about them or they can't do anything right or or this or that and and I think back to um, a college roommate that I had who would re-clean the bathroom after I cleaned it. And <laughs> <laughs> because he didn't think that I did it well enough. Uh -huh. And so I stopped cleaning the bathroom because there was no point in me wasting my time. And I, I feel like as women, we kind of do this ourselves with our partners, whoever's in our house with us. So we reload the dishwasher. And I hear this a lot whenever I talk about this, of how many women out there reload the dishwasher because they don't think their partner does it well enough. Mm -hmm. And so then your partner is not going to load the dishwasher anymore because right. why bother? It cycles from there. And so for me, it was just being very aware of this and thinking it didn't need to be this way followed by reading lots of books. I love reading books related to time management and productivity. And recently I've gotten more into the invisible labor piece of that. And one of my favorite books I've read recently is called Fair Play by Eve Rodsky. And she talks about this exact stuff about how she would be doing all these things after her husband went to bed. And so her husband never saw this work all of this stuff that we do and mm -hmm. why is that and we should all be we're all responsible for our household and it shouldn't just fall on the mom and so i'm on a mission to change this for starting with women in the household so that we can be more productive in other parts of our lives and contribute in ways that isn't that is more than fighting over the dishwasher every day and i i liked when you talked about the invisible so how do women make the invisible more visible because i think mm -hmm. that's a, a big key right there it is yeah so part of it is being aware of it on your end of just knowing uh, that it doesn't all fall on you and then making it visible through what i love using our index cards like three by five index cards mm -hmm. and you write on each card a different task that you do around the house and it could be loading the dishwasher. It could be cleaning the sinks or wiping down the dining room table or all the steps of laundry get their own, their own piece. Okay. And you can do this with families as well as, as only the adults in a household. And you sit down together and you dole out to each person who's currently doing which task and see, see where that falls. And we're not looking for 50-50 things we want equity but not necessarily the 50 50 like you do an x number of tasks right. and i do an x number because they're going to be different some of them are going to require more effort or more steps or just something different so they're not all equal in terms of time mm -hmm. and some things might be different like i don't like to cook and so my husband takes on more of that and mm -hmm. i will take on more he's also not a morning person so i do breakfast because i'm up earlier and my kids are hungry yes. and 
And so we just, we dole things out that way, but sit down and have that conversation. From there, it's looking at what are the expectations of each of these tasks? When are these things going to happen? To what level of quality? And it's not just your level, it's an agreed upon level. You know, if, if the dishwasher is loaded every day, does it matter? If you could mm-hmm. fit three more pieces of Tupperware in there, or can we just be happy that it was done? Amen. <laughs> Starting there, start with the index cards, and that helps bring all of that visible, invisible out into the open and, and add to it and have regular conversations about that, uh, of what that looks like. And, and you can trade off. You know, maybe one week you're in charge of dinners and the next week your partner is or dishwashers yes. or laundry or whatever, whatever that looks like. What I love is the having the conversations, Mm -hmm. you know, about what it is that we do on a day to day basis that we just kind of automatic pilot and Mm -hmm. we don't really think of until we're Mm -hmm. so stressed and overwhelmed by everything that we're doing. Right. So I love that you're bringing this, you know, you're you're suggesting that we bring this to light and have a conversation about it and then Mm -hmm. really talk about, well, what does that look like? And, and together. Mm-hmm. make the choices for the level of standards right and come up with those and, and realizing that most of our partners most men were probably raised not aware of all of that they may have been raised in families where mom did everything yeah. and dad was a breadwinner and that was it and so they don't know any different that's what mm-hmm. they see or they may want to participate in the family but they don't feel like they can they don't know how they're not sure maybe you've always done things and nagged them or whatever that looks like and so it's going into that conversation without blame expectation and blame definitely no blame yeah certain like you don't want to start it with well you never do this or that or i'm so tired of doing this or that it's hey let's talk about this and and it's going to change too as your kids age as things in life shift even if you don't have kids in the household you can certainly use this as well and and it will change as life circumstances change what's the one thing you want people to take away from this conversation i think the biggest thing is awareness the start of that mindset shift of knowing that doing it all one is going to look different for each person and that it's not necessarily that you have to take on everything in your household while also working full time outside of the home yep. or raising children or whatever that looks like that that you are a partner in this family and that you are in this together and that you should be working together to to raise the kids to to make the household function and it's not all on you and so really starting with that mindset shift Um, which is where I start with my clients is the starting, let's start with a mindset shift. And once we get that, then we can look at all the tasks and how to get them done in a timely manner and move forward from there, but making sure that we're doing the right tasks and we have the right mindset around it. And then having that conversation as we talked about um, with the index cards and really getting that started and knowing you may need a a counselor outside of the two of you if that's, if you're stuck and struggling. Mm -hmm. Um, but sometimes a, a third party can help guide those conversations as well. You referred <laughs> to the mindset, shifting the mindset. Mm-hmm. Say just a little bit more about that. So I think it's that mindset of um, like my college roommate or uh, redoing the dishwasher. So let's say you're putting the kids to bed and you come into the kitchen and your partner, I talk a lot about dishes because we're all in the, the yeah. kitchen together. So yeah. this, this falls a lot into it. just it's something we all can understand. So you're putting your kids to bed and you come into the kitchen and your husband or your partner has loaded the dishwasher, but maybe they didn't wipe the counters down or they didn't hand wash a few things. And instead of grumbling and going, oh, you can't do anything right. Always have to do everything around here. You think, great, all I have to do is wipe down the kitchen counters. Same amount of work, very different mindset. I agree. And so taking that mindset into the rest of your relationship and functioning of the how things are working. And so this was another example, again, related to the dishwasher. So my husband and I both work from home. We've been home a lot in the last year and a half. 
And I noticed that, so we go through a lot of dishes. I have two kids and we, we, we clean through dishes every day. We run our dishwasher often. And I noticed at one point I was feeling really resentful that our kitchen was always full of dirty dishes. Mm -hmm. And we'd run the dishwasher at night and we might not get to emptying it until sometime later in the day. But because my job is a little bit more flexible, I'm in and out of the kitchen a lot more. And so it started to feel like, oh, my husband must just be expecting me to do this. Like he's clearly not bothering. <laughs> it's it's me. It's all on me. Mm -hmm. And I was talking with him about it one evening. I don't think that's the case. And he said, no. He said, I'm working during the day and I know we're going to get to it around dinner time. It, wasn't, it didn't even cross his mind. He wasn't like sitting at his desk going, I really wish my wife would just empty the dishwasher. She's so lazy. It really. <laughs> it was just the dishes were there and we were going to get to them and it didn't matter. But I just had this mindset that it was my responsibility because I have the flexibility or I'm hanging out with the kids or whatever. And so of course I should make the time to do it when in reality it didn't really matter. It was going to happen at some point and, and he wasn't, he didn't care. And so it's coming in with that mindset of we're in this together mm -hmm. and it's not all on me to do all of this work. And, and I get there's a sense of appreciation Mm -hmm. for what is being done, being able mm -hmm. to really witness that, mm -hmm. what is happening, because there is stuff happening. Right. Yeah. And that we all need to work on that together and talk about it and know that it's happening and appreciate. Yeah, absolutely. There needs to be that appreciation in there as well. Valerie, would you tell our listeners what you do mm -hmm. specifically and how they could get in contact with you if they'd like to work with you? So I have a business called Home Most Simple, um, soon to be Stride Productivity. I'm rebranding later this year and whenever you're listening to this. So fall of 2021, I'm a productivity specialist and I work with overwhelmed and overcommitted moms, really whether you work um, outside of the home or which is hard to say as so many people are working remotely mm, uh, these days yes. too. So, or you are a stay at home mom or wherever you fall within that, but really focusing with my clients on where their time is going, how, and making sure that they're working, or focusing on the right tasks. And I do all of that through a virtual community. And so I would love to connect on social media or come check out my website, which is homemostsimple.com and learn more about me and some of the work I do or send me a message and I would be happy to talk further with anything we talked about today and how we can help get you started um, making some of these shifts in your own life. Thank you so much for joining us and having this conversation that is so important now as so many of us, as you mentioned, are remote working. We're home an awful lot more mm -hmm. and it's a new way of being. And sometimes we just need tips and tools to navigate the new way of being. So we're really, <laughs> really glad that you're able to help us in this field. Great. Well, thank you for having me. It's been great. So for our Belief Busters listeners, well, I hope that you take these tips on board because it is a new way of being. And how do we get to live a life that feels balanced and open and joy filled and not overwhelmed? So I'm glad that you were able to join us. I hope that you will get in contact with Valerie if you're feeling any of those things and you want to utilize some of the great suggestions that she has on simplifying your life. <laughs> See you next time on Belief Busters. If you are enjoying these conversations about assessing your belief systems and how to transform outdated beliefs, then please subscribe and give us a positive review. To support this podcast and its transformative work, you can also become a sponsor for as little as $5 a month. You can reach Rev. Cherie at info at beliefbusterspodcast.org. To continue on this journey of evolution, you can also get my book, Turning Your Why Into Why Not, at Amazon or any other bookstore which gives you practical tools to do this work. See you next time on the flip side.